Okay, we're looking at Craft Mountain in the Calico Basin. And we look over in this direction, looking toward Turtlehead Peak. And then down the Calico Basin, Calico Hills area. Great little parking lot here. And we're at the end of the the road, basically, the Calico Basin. You take um, 215 to Charleston exit and then head up toward the mountains and take the uh, first right after you get out of the um, residential area. And that's Calico Basin. You go to the end of the road and you're at Craft Mountain. So why would you want to hike Craft Mountain? Well, let's just say hypothetically that you had a surgery three days ago and you're recovering from your surgery and you want something that's that's light and yet in the wilderness or let's say that you're just starting out you haven't done a whole lot of um, activity um, definitely nothing strenuous for the um, for the winter and it's spring and you decide hey I want to get out into the wilderness, but I don't want to end up um, biting off more than I can chew as far as a, a, a trail experience. So I would say, you know, Craft Mountain might be the experience for you. Um, it's about a three and a half mile loop around this mountain here, Craft Mountain, and um, lots of amazing scenery. Um, access to Turtlehead Peak, um, kind of a back door to Turtlehead Peak. And um, I don't think we're looking at Turtlehead Peak right there, no. But um, it's, it's further back. Um, you can see La Madre Mountain in the distance here, right between the, the mountains. But you're, um, you're in a a pretty wild area and yet you it's just like three and a half miles so we're going to try this out and see what the the challenges are what the scenery's like and uh, and just take it easy today so craft mountain loop here we go we're going clockwise today you can see the trail marker so nice markings on this trail and there are you know a lot of people on the trail so it's not a solitude experience but um, what we do is we're gonna head up you can see where the trail goes over this rise and we'll take a closer look at it in just a moment so this is the first rise Interesting, another little marker here. Um, Ash Spring is in this direction. And I would guess that that um, area with lots of vegetation up ahead is Ash Spring. So that's another option here. Um, could be interesting. We'll have to try that sometime. Anyway, Craft Mountain though. Craft Mountain Loop goes off in this direction as as I mentioned just a moment ago over the hill so here we go approaching another waypoint this is a very well marked trail so so far it's like there's no way you can get lost on it um, we're entering La Madre Mountains Wilderness beyond this sign so uh, in La Madre Mountains Wilderness you can see a number of um, options on the Las Vegas area trails page a uh, huge wilderness area four times the size of Red Rock Park and uh, very very beautiful anyway um, we're we're heading up toward that pass the first pass on the Craft Mountain Loop and let's just do a quick 360 there's Craft Mountain And, you know, as I look at um, features like this, I'm, I'm always thinking, well, if I wanted to climb to the top, 
I probably wouldn't take, you know, I'm not the kind of climber that's going to take the um, direct vertical route here, but there are some other potential routes that one could take and then skirt along the top and get up Craft Mountain. One of these days we'll try it. Okay, looking around, now we're looking down toward the Calico Basin area. And the parking area is right down here. So you can see we haven't gone very far. This is an easy rider today. And um, over here you see the tip of Blue Diamond Mountain. And I hear there are lots of wild burrows in that area. And we'll try that at some point. Um, Calico Hills. And we've got a page for the Calico Hills. We did the Grand Loop around Calico Hills. And also went the Grand Staircase up to the top. That's on LasVegasAreaTrails.com. That's a beautiful experience. And then completing the 360. And as I mentioned, our we're, we're approaching the first big pass. So here we go. This would actually make a pretty cool runner's loop. Uh, this would be Heartbreak Hill. And you could do the loop a few times if it's three and a half miles every every circuit. Um, you could get quite a workout in. And this is the pass. Um, and still going uphill. And you can see we've ascended quite a bit up to this point. There you see Calico Basin stretching below us. We'll just give the quick 360. Yeah, if you're a rock climber, or you're an amateur rock climber, either way, there, there's just climbing possibilities at every level imaginable. Now we're circling around looking at Craft Mountain again. And you can see some potential approaches, although I warn you that things that look pretty easy from this level, once you get up in there, uh, they can be you can get difficult pretty quickly. But take a little at a time, turn around and come back another day and do that a number of times. That's what I do. Eventually you make it to the top. Okay, let's go ahead and continue up this pass here. And you can see a few wanderers up there. If you look carefully, let you know where the trail is ahead. So let's continue on up. By the way, speaking of rock climbers, when you see people with these things that look like a mattress on their back, let's see if we can nail this down here. There we go. Those are rock climbers. Looks like they're carrying a mattress on their back. They use that to um, provide some cushioning on the ground for when they slip off the rock that they're bouldering and and practicing on. So um, looks like um, rock climbers definitely know about this location. Here we are almost at the summit of the first pass around Craft Mountain. And then here, let's take a look at Craft Mountain from this perspective. A lot of great vertical climbing walls here into that. And evidently, these people are. And then that's the continuation of the pass. Got some interesting weather shaping up around us. 
Look at this. What an amazing landscape. And then here you can see a good shot of Rainbow Mountain. There's Potosi Mountain. There are the Calico Hills. Good aerial view. And you can see at the base of the Calico Hills to the um, lower left of those hills is Red Springs Desert Oasis. And then Blue Diamond Mountain. One of that first pass, and this is the area we just ascended and you can see the beautiful rugged um, mountainside here, Craft Mountain. This is the area we're headed through as we round the first um, bend in the loop, Craft Mountain Loop. And then, yeah, lots of weather coming in here. Um, there's Turtlehead Peak. Continuing to descend through the pass, a lot of beautiful rock formations all around us. Red rock, calico, all these are ancient Jurassic era frozen sand dunes. And what a variety of landscape. Some runners coming up the trail. Continuing down this pass, look at these rock formations. Sending now into a wash, and we'll see where this leads, but it's got to lead around the other side of Craft Mountain. So, here's the 360. Now we're in a wash, and I'll show you in a moment when I find out myself how where the trail uh, sends out of the wash, because it's got to eventually come out of the wash. Quick 360, tip of Turtlehead Peak, and you can see the surrounding hills. A lot of bird sounds, a lot of life in this seemingly barren place. They're looking down the wash where we just ascended.
and onward. As we round this wash, you can see Turtle Head Peak ahead. And the approach up Turtle Head Peak would need to be to the right. I don't think you can, <laughs> you can approach it to the left. Too many cliffs. So, starting to rain, actually. Here's the wash we are in. Get a quick 360. And continuing up. Suggestion, stay in the main wash. There was a branch to the left a little earlier that ended at a dead end. So we just stay to the right and it gets a little, uh, a little bit of scrambling here, but it's doable. Here we go. Interesting feature, the smiley face bush. I don't think that nature did this, but um, we're continuing along up the wash as it winds around Craft Mountain and looking down where we came from and definitely we've got a little wind and and rain hitting us but not much just the first sprinkles but um, the way the sky looks it could cut loose at any moment there we are smiley bush here we go. Well, after going all the way up to the Smiley Bush, I turned around heading down the wash. And I'm not even sure I'm on the same wash I was on before. So let's just see where this wash leads. And if there is a route that's out of the um, canyon up to a pass, that will be the route that I took on the way. <laughs> if not, who knows where I am. Maybe I'm on the true Craft Mountain loop at this point. We don't know. I think that where I was at the Smiley Bush that I had um, ascended the wash a little too far and I was on a larger circle route that was starting to get a little complicated. Lots of rocks and it was starting to rain and there was even some snow. And these rocks, you do not want to be on them when they are wet because it becomes an ice skating rink. So I turned around heading down this wash and either we're going to go over the pass that we ascended on the way or we're going to end up in another whole area. And if we do, then maybe we hit the true Craft Mountain Loop. Some climbers up on the rocks up here. Can hear him, can't see him. So let's just continue on down, see where we end up here. Yeah, this may actually be the true Craft Mountain Loop. Uh, the other one was a little tangent off in a different direction. And um, yeah, if that's so, it shows how easy it is to get lost in all these little canyons. Okay, here's the key. Um, I'm up on Pink Goblin Pass, which is that first pass that we ascended to after leaving the parking lot. What happens is the trail goes down into the canyon here, and then instead of continuing up the canyon, as I did, what you do is you take a U-turn 
and you head down the canyon and around Craft Mountain. And that's how you do the Craft Mountain loop. I'm not taking that loop today just because it, uh, there's some um, steep portions and I just don't want to risk my surgery on those um, steep rocky portions. But um, when you do the Craft Mountain Loop, yeah, you ascend over Pink Goblin Pass, which is the, the pass here that you ascend to right from the parking lot. It'll take you down to the base of the canyon. As soon as you get to the base of the canyon, take a sharp right. Do not continue up the canyon as I did. Um, you can, and that will be a much larger loop, but um, continue down the canyon and around Craft Mountain. Uh, you'll be around the left side of Craft Mountain, and um, there will be some rock scrambling, some steep sections, but they are doable. Um, you could also go around the other direction on the loop and see those sections from above. Uh, so anyway, Craft Mountain Loop. We will return and do the complete loop next time. <laughs> um, for today, yeah, we went way up the canyon today and... Uh, continued to ascend and it was raining and there was some snow and and so it didn't look like we were on track so we turned around headed back down the canyon and now we are headed up Pink Goblin Pass which is the pass that we um, ascended from the parking lot.